parry, grand slam, throw the laser away, approach, parry, grand slam, throw the laser away, and eventually they die. But with enough damage, a grand slam can lead into the ending sequence, skipping the shield and defeating the knight. Great stuff, we're three bosses down and one to go. Next up is Sumo. Oh. Next up is Sumo. Cyclone kick dodging is a bit iffy here because of Sumo's shape. You should get them down in about two cycle. Oh. You should get them down in about- Oh, fuck off. <laughs> Nothing is different about the end, but what they said to me wasn't very nice. fucking start to the day. I've played Sonic Frontiers in a variety of different ways in the past year, mainly with a lack of upgrades. As you can see, I have quite the experience with this type of challenge, so I figured with the release of the Final Horizon that we would revisit the challenge that started it all. Beating Sonic Frontiers without upgrading skills or stats. Again. Nah, it's a working title. Frontiers has had three major updates and a huge evolution of strategies come out ever since I made that video back in November, just 22 days after the game's release. With all these changes, I want to see how my original challenge has changed, as well as if another story is even possible. The original challenge rules were that I could not upgrade Sonic skills or stats, no fishing, and all the guardians must be defeated. All on hard difficulty. I'm gonna keep these two rules, but the others can go. There's no fishing in another story, and the guardians are ridiculously difficult to beat even with upgrades, so I'm not gonna waste my time with them. Trust me, it's hard enough without them. So to quickly reiterate, no stat upgrades, no skill upgrades, aside from Silent, Grand Slam, Cross Slash, and Cyclone Kick, and hard difficulty as much as possible. There is one part in my mind that I think will be impossible without the platforming assistance from easy mode, so I'm allowing a quick switch just in case. So let's get started. We'll do a quick run through the main game and then focus on another story after we reach Arnos Island. Also, just realizing now, I changed some settings in my OBS and for the majority of the footage, it's tanked the bitrate, so apologies if anything is harder to see. Right, here we go. Hard difficult- the game fucking cra- Cyberspace isn't all too different from the original video, except for the addition of a jump deceleration meter. This doesn't make that much of a difference in the first stage, and since I'm going to use the island skip, the keys on this island don't mean much. We head over to the ninja next, and what I didn't know before was that Sonic's finisher is different depending on what direction you hold the joystick. Downwards has the fastest finisher. Ninja is very easy without any upgrades, even on hard difficulty. Grabbing the Silo is one of the four abilities that Sonic has allowed. We can then hop over to the tower, which is really easy as well. You don't even need to use Silo at all. And then we have the notoriously difficult 1-2. And even with all the updates to the game, it's still pretty hard. You'll need to grab the first Chaos Emerald before the game allows you to speak to Amy. But once you've done that, you can grab Grand Slam, which you will need to be able to defeat Giganto in a no upgrades run. Just a quick note about these extra skills, the additional characters in another story have added skills beyond simply jumping and attacking. Just treat Sonic's extra skills the same way, except they have to be manually unlocked. I attempted an action chain in hopes that I could spare the time to get Spin Dash, but that brings me to an addition in Update 3. Doesn't matter if you've done all the action chains or not, Sonic will have Spin Dash unlocked in another story. I gave up on the action chains instantly. As fun as they are, once you've done 40 in one day, you never want to touch them again. I still cry about this every night. I took a stand and decided that no major glitches would be a stupid rule, and I'll probably have to use some later on anyway, so I decided to finally learn how to use Hyper Bounce properly and skipped over to Giganto. Hey guys! Welcome to the first lesson in my Titan Killing Made Easy. Today, we will learn how to kill Giganto without any skills or stats. You must parry, then Grand Slam, then parry, then Grand Slam, then parry, then Grand Slam, then parry, then basically the point I'm trying to make is that there were still no changes made to the bosses in the main game and I'm sad. Now I might not be a Sonic speedrunner in any way, shape or form, but I've watched them plenty and have a pretty good idea of how to skip easily my least favourite island. I grabbed two treasure spots for tokens, another for a gear, and then went right over to 2-2. Two -two. You only need one stage worth of keys to skip Ares, so in just 34 seconds I got all the missions completed and exactly enough keys to finish the island. I'm not sure how many tokens you need to get by, but I was able to do it with just 32, which is four treasure spots worth. After grabbing Cyclone Kick off of Knuckles and then the first Chaos Emerald, I can run through Wyvern Escape badly, and then let my Chaos Emerald be stolen. If you do this, you can completely skip the blue emerald on Chaos Island since it's kinda iffy to try and get, at least I don't really like guessing it. Now, I just need to find a way to get over to the Wyvern Arena. Normally you would do Slingshot for this, but without Stomp, you can't do it at all, so we need to use a work around this. What I found easiest to do is use the momentum from this rail to get you nice and high up on this rock, and then long jump over to the arena. There's just enough distance for you to make it. Welcome to lesson two of Titan Killing Made Easy. 
You can't silent Wyvern, but the only thing making this fight easy is the practically infinite parry window. So just take advantage of it while you can, and otherwise, spam the only skills you have. And now we quickly return to Ares just to grab the Emerald back, and this gives us a slight head start for the Chaos Island. Unfortunately, this island doesn't have any major skips, so we have to collect all the tokens manually. <laughs> in order to participate in such parties, come hang out with us over at twitch.tv forward slash snack pigeon with a one and a zero. Moderators, crush his skull. I basically just action chained the entire island. The most notable thing that happened through most of this was the shield escape, which activated as soon as I unlocked cross slash. Shield escape is nothing special without mods for me, it's the same thing every single time. You would think by now that the devs would realise that a game should be difficult if you upgrade nothing while playing the hardest difficulty, but unfortunately, most of the guardians in the main story play out pretty similarly to this. You listen to him. Oh my god! Shout out Hilda, by the way, love her, go to Darsis, please go and follow her. I would talk about the amount of fun I had while playing through Stage 3-1 if the bitrate wasn't so awful, OBS, I swear I am never forgiving you for this. It does get better later in the video though, I promise. All the tokens are collected, and I've barely done anything for the story. I quickly blasted through Ikaruga, which thank god this isn't the ending anymore. Blasted through boxes, which is easy as usual, Sonic, what are you doing with that? Blasted through the bridge, which somehow I died at, and then failed many a times at pinball. I don't want to talk about it. Titan killing made easy, lesson three. Just be aggressive, smack him with the shield, silent, cross slash, get to phase two, smack him with the shield, silent, cross slash, and win. Simple. <laughs> I'm genuinely surprised that out of all the complaints about Ray Island, they never changed it. It's an extension of Kronos, they could have so easily merged them and made this part a return to Kronos and that this isn't a review video, maybe one day. With the arrival on Oranos Island, we can skip it all and head straight into another story. It's genuinely as if Sonic Team realised their mistake with the whole power of teamwork shit and made fun of it. Based Eggman. Our new friends don't have very much going on in their skill trees to start off with. By default, Amy has better vertical movement than Sonic with a glide and an extra jump, but loses power boost, light speed dash, and spin dash. You can speak to these Coco to get skill points, so it looks like the fucking merchant from Resident Evil 4. Over here, stranger. Which I did collect on the small chance that there were going to be parts that turned out to be impossible. Guardians are still required to enter cyberspace to a certain extent, but only Sonic can enter cyberspace, and without any fighting abilities, Amy and the others are never winning those fights. They're hard enough when fully maxed out, and running low stats was not considered for this update. Man, I dread the extreme run that I inevitably do. The first time that Amy's skills become relevant at all is after speaking to Hermit Coco. Oh, and if you get Starfall Plus, don't be like me. Make use of it and Amy's story is practically free. Amy's homing attack delay is significantly shorter than Sonic's, which is nice for keeping up with the cannon boss. The first big hindrance I ran into was the first Chaos Emerald, which I realised I was just being dumb about because all I had to do was go higher up a tiny bit and then that was it. That's Amy's first section done. Knuckles' first objective can be reached easily by doing an earlier challenge and then using the height to head straight to the impact token or whatever it's called, I forgot. Without skills, we unfortunately can't do Knuckles' infinite height exploit since Knuckles fucking forgets how to punch by default. But without punching, the second impact form is a bit more difficult. But Knuckles' glide and jump ball both have a hitbox, so as awkward as it is, you can still break the obstacles and get the objective. I started to have trouble with this Chaos Emerald, however. I never did this puzzle properly in my first playthrough, so I'm assuming that using a well-timed boost jump to bypass the lasers is not what you're meant to do. And I got stuck when I reached the top. You do in fact need to have Psy Knuckle unlocked to get past this part specifically. I didn't want to fail this early, so I had a look around to see if there was anything I could use for a boost. Things weren't looking great, and I hope for future games that the pop-in issue is fixed because it was causing issues with finding what I needed to proceed. Hales manages to be simultaneously broken and be the shittest character ever made. His flight is slightly broken, but that means nothing when this little guy can't attack at all by default. Like, no homing attack either, it's so bad! It makes the first challenge a bit odd because you can't clear the way of the balloons with the... ranches. I'm calling them that from now on. But with a bit of patience and precision, I could get the first Cyber Coco looking at fella. And straight from there, you can just fly over to the Chaos Emerald. And now we can get back to playing as the Chad Sonic. There's like 10 hours of footage in this video, and like 6 of it is just this. And this was when I discovered that Spin Dash is automatically unlocked. 
Most stages are fundamentally unaffected by this since most of them don't have a time limit, but 4B has corrupted tails that you need to raise for one of the missions. The stage is pretty challenging, most of the new ones are, and there's also no checkpoints. Whatever mission you choose has to be done in one go. Which became complicated, so I just figured doing them all individually was going to be better long term, even if it took time. Each mission completed gets you a lookout Coco, which for some reason I thought they were the Coco you needed for Amy's section, but it's just normal Coco. So I went through all of 4B and then tested my luck against Tank Plus. Never again. I do not know what they were thinking with Tank other than removing the tornado phase. And as much as I don't want to get started on the spider, I do have a few things to say. If a patch comes out for this game, all the new Guardians have to be toned down because this is ridiculous. All the people complaining on Twitter finally got what they wanted, some challenging Guardians, and now they're complaining about the game being too hard. There is some truth to that. I was finding these Guardians too difficult because I was fighting them without skill or stat upgrades, which is supposed to make for a fun challenge, but that was not taken into consideration for this update. Before, if you had a maxed out profile, you could wipe the floor with the enemies. Now, it's almost like it's bare minimum. I think the complaints were taken a bit too seriously without sufficient testing. Anyways, back to the game. I ended up not using the Guardians to get any gears because they were far too difficult to fight. Gears are widely available in the open zone anyway, as well as plenty of Lookout Coco, come on, doesn't that thing just look mad tasty? My journey for an overabundance of Lookout Coco took me to stage 4D, which was one of the only stages I've actually tried at this point. Beating the stage without touching the mines is practically free, and once you know where to go, the hidden exit is no bother at all. The numbered rings, on the other hand? What? I went to attempt 4E, but as it turned out, Wait, what? I'm not doing this stage, what the hell? I thought the I thought finishing before the bomb went off was gonna be a mission. And what the fuck were they thinking with these guardians? Like, please tell me who came up with this. I just want to talk. No upgrades doesn't really affect climbing the towers for the most part. The actual trials get closer and closer to being no upgrades anyway. So it's like picking the hardest difficulty off the bat, really. Dragon's trial wasn't that bad. You can either parry into Grand Slam everything, but if you can get a soldier into the air, just keep using Cyclone Kick and they'll be gone. I didn't see any issues with Tower 2, and Snake's trial is nothing special either. I found the best way to do it was to have the shells throw the disc as far away from them as possible. So after you parry it back and forth, it has a much further distance to travel, letting you hit more. Sonic stats are fixed at 1 for this, and Psylope is the only skill you can use, so we have to part with our only good damage dealers just for this mission. Once again, the same rules apply at the end of Tower 3, and Tiger's Trial is probably the easiest, you just have to fight the horde of wolves that move at insane speed. The time given is very generous, so speed isn't a problem. Bunching them together, if possible, will help beat them faster though. In Tower 4, you have these switches that can only be activated with quick Psylope, which we don't have. I later learned that you can just skip this tower using the Hyper Bounce speedrun trick, which I needed to know at the time, so just briefly I had to drop the difficulty. Hope you're okay with that. No way! <laughs> no way! No fucking way! No fucking way! No way! Towers are dead, bro. <laughs> I was caught off guard by the ninja and crane's trial at first, but it really is as simple as just parrying and using Grand Slam. You won't find that many opportunities to attack otherwise. They were also a bit over dramatic with this, they give you 10 minutes for this when in the hardest possible situation you can do it in literally under 30 seconds. And now we're back to Amy, where not using Starfall has now bitten me in the ass because this is where I realised it was regular Coco and not Lookout Coco that I needed. A good way to find loose Coco is just to look around where the structures are, and you'll usually find them in groups of at least four or so. It becomes increasingly obvious from here on that the pop in is more than just a graphical issue, and is actually preventing us from being able to even see an alternative route. Thankfully, Amy doesn't need it for reaching Hermit Coco, and the Elder Coco and Chaos Emeralds are just out in the open, so they don't require any extra special effort. That's Amy's second segment down. Returning to Knuckles, his vertical movement is seriously shit without the Sonic Boom glitch, but the game was clearly aware of that and didn't really ask for much in that area. I managed to reach the second impact form even with the pop-in putting me at a disadvantage, and then we got the elusive Namu raid and made some new friends. Namu, I appreciate you a ton, thank you. Like I said earlier, I skipped a ton of Knuckles platforming with the boom glitch in my first run, so this was all very new to me. It wasn't too hard, I like the way he got to make use of the air dash rings in tandem with his glide, and I hope it's used more in future games. And with that, 
were finished with knuckles. And as Tails, the first Coco device was shut off behind a door, locked by a set of cannons. Now, Tails doesn't have any moves to attack with by default, so I genuinely thought this was going to be the end. It's not difficulty dependent either, there was no changes to it if you swapped down to easy difficulty. I checked around the piece, but there was nothing. No alternate way in. I did notice that a cannon somehow got destroyed, so that was the spark of hope that I needed to be able to proceed. I just had to figure out how I managed that. With new viewers, I explained the predicament we were in. We've gone from having the most broken character to possibly the shittest of them all. Our boy can't homing attack, which drops out magnet dashing, not that it's useful, but anyway. The only way I could see to get up to the door was by flying up from miles away. If I got hit and dropped rings, I had to go and pick them up. I thought for a second about how I was going to do this. Chat were determined to not let me use Silent Pier. I made a quick save file so I could use the skills to see how I was going to get up, and I still couldn't figure it out properly. I thought about how some parts as the other characters seemed impossible and remembered that Knuckles had an active hitbox with his jump ball. Thankfully Tails was the same, so I figured out that you can jump directly on top of the cannonballs. And as fiddly as this was to do, I did make it in the end. I realised that jumping as close to a cannon as possible to hit the cannonball back practically as soon as it's fired is the most consistent way to do it. I must have done that by accident with the first cannon. Anyway, that's me going off script. Next up is just another big climbing part. I don't really know how to explain this part, so I'm just going to let past me talk you through it. Right, I need to see how this... Okay, so the jump... I, I see how the jump works. So you have to go... You have to go up into that. Yes! We are so back. And we're gonna go round here, onto this, and we're gonna go. Nah, we're so back. We are so back. And that brings us to the last task as Tails, which is such a fucking meme. This is the part that I thought would be genuinely impossible. You can fly from the Coco pretty close to where you need to be, but I messed that part up and got thrown back to the beginning. But accessing it from where I was was kind of cringe. I had to boost off this slope, jump, boost again, and instantly activate flight to get just enough height to make it. Otherwise, I could just damage boost through all the lasers. This is genuinely the only way you can beat this part as Tails. It's so cringe. And now we're closing in on the end, the final trial tower. Spin Dash makes this tower climb a lot quicker and easier, but unfortunately, I can't say the same thing for the trial. This is unlike any other trial you've done before. Nah, there's no point being over dramatic about this. You all know what I'm talking about. Titans round two, here we go. Giganto's first phase is free. Even though we haven't powered up much, we're still more powerful from when we originally fought them, which lets us use Cyclone Kick and Cross Slash. Running right in for a side loop and mashing Cross Slash is the best way to take out phase one. Generally, being aggressive and avoiding having to use the parry is the best way to go about it. You only need to parry Giganto once, and it's when you side loop them in the second phase. Succeed at this and you win. Great. Do this as fast as you can because your rings carry over and you need as many as you can for the rest of the trial. And now we are taken right back to Hedgehog Me Cry with an even tighter parry window, but at least we won't die in one hit, right? You can actually slightly increase the parry window by dropping your frame rate down to 30, taking your parry window from 0 0.017 seconds to a whopping 0 0.034 seconds. Wow, just the saving grace I needed. I'm happy to consider myself a fucking god for some of the attacks I managed to parry, but this tail whip attack needs to go. It's so hard to tell when it's going to hit. Unfortunately, I might as well play this on extreme because even if you get hit away, that costs precious time and on my first shot, even if I did win, I was going to die at night regardless. So I started again. Repeating Giganto was once again no issue at all. It wasn't perfect every time, sometimes they might go for the laser blast in phase 2 right away. If they do, mash the bumpers to simply skip the animation and rush back into the fight. I was getting slightly more used to Wyvern's melee attacks, at least the openers. I couldn't get the missile timing down yet, but if you absolutely have to, you can dodge them all and just fly over to Wyvern. This can take a lot of time however, I think you may be better off just learning the missile timing, it's more effective generally since you'll fly straight to the head. Don't be caught off guard by the double hit in the second phase. The attack looks the same at glance but is a lot faster than phase 1, and the second hit is a bit more janky to try and time a parry. When actually attacking Wyvern, I found Cyclone Kick to be more effective than Cross Slash, which was a surprise. Cyclone Kick will also offer you the opportunity to see what Wyvern is going to hit you with next. Cross Slash is a bit weird in that regard, so using that instead will cause issues. With enough fails, I was finally able to beat Wyvern, but not with very much time left, practically by the skin of my teeth. This didn't bode well going into the night fight, and after all the hits I took, I just could not figure out when I was supposed to parry. I wasn't sure if this was even possible, and was just about prepared to throw in the towel here. But, with more practice, I was able to get Wyvern down more consistently. 
Grand Slam might not do that much damage, but if you can easily reach melee range, that's a ton of damage you deal without using any rings. Using that, I was able to win with plenty of rings left going in to fight the knight. With little time remaining, I had to take massive risks against the knight. I didn't run the shield segment because it would take far too much time, so I waited for the shield to be lowered and cross slashed all the way to phase 2. There was no point being careful with the shield bounce either. You really have to just run in and hope your parry timing was on point. And also hope the knight was in the correct spot. And then right at the end, with barely any time left, cross slash decided to fail me and simply would not work. I was able to resort to Cyclone Kick, which was an absolute saving grace, and managed to defeat Knight with very little time remaining. To put it in short, Giganto is a warm up to waste your time, Wyvern is a test of parrying, and Knight is a test of everything. Get everything done perfectly, and you win the trial. Oh my god. Who did it? Oh my god. And with all the trials beaten, we can head to the final battle. Base Supreme is no different from back in even day one, but if you remember the last time I did this, Supreme was the hardest out of the Titans anyway. I'm a bit disappointed that nothing was changed about this phase, but I guess if it was longer then the true final boss could potentially be impossible. At least they took advantage of just a seemingly difficult boss. You can abuse cross slash without even stunning Supreme, break the last line of defense and a few more cross slashes will take them out. But then, there's no more Ikaruga and we have a real supersonic boss fight to end off this amazing game. Supreme goes through an almost perfect Dark Gaia-like transformation into the Edge true form, with seven arms and a healing card making this, at a glance, a seemingly impossible fight. And at the start, it really felt that way. Removing the card is pretty easy, while not obvious at first, you need to dodge around Supreme's head to reach the connection, and then just mash attack until it breaks off. Now you can deal damage without having to heal. When Supreme starts sending projectiles out, let them hit you. This will reduce your max ring count, but it will let you transform into Supersonic 2 a lot earlier. Supersonic 2 is an unbelievably cringe name, and I refuse to believe that's what it's actually called. And with enough perfect parries, you can take Supreme down really easily. The thing is, without any of Sonic's skills, it's difficult to get to where you need to be in order to actually win. Since the game finally decides to make use of the skills, and doesn't even tell you. Unfortunately, with Supreme stunned, I couldn't see where any of the plasma shots were coming from, and my ring count got reduced past zero, and the fight was over. That was genuinely hopeless. I know it was only the first shot I had at it, but there really seemed to be no way out. There's a lot in the way of this fight. If you cannot land these perfect parries, it's over right away and you may as well reduce the difficulty. But I'm not doing that. My 500 plus hours between Sekiro and Thymesia are not going to fail me here. The distinct lack of quick silo reduces a lot of convenience in the fight and really leaves the final result down to chance. As well as level 1 stats, you aren't dealing very much damage with your limited skill set. But I'm not prepared to give up. After rushing down base supreme again, I gave the end another shot. I made better progress this time, but it wasn't that much more successful overall. The position of the trees makes it difficult to spot where the shots are coming from, and if you miss one, you're likely going to get chained by them. I mean, finally a titan fight where getting hit is actually punishing, but still, your max ring count is reduced by 30 every single time you get hit by one, bringing my ring count down to less than 100. You can advance to the final phase of the fight by using a manual side loop on Supreme's gun, but it's not easy to pull off, it's really fiddly. And with the beginning of the next phase, getting rid of that cable is the most important thing. Dodge around Supreme to parry one of the arms on their back and you can land a Grand Slam. The thing is, this does nothing against the cable and the health will all just be healed back. And starting from the final phase, the first plasma shot will activate the spirit bomb attack, which... If you are under 100 rings, you lose, since the attack ring checks you for 100. If I was going to win this, I needed to be a lot more efficient. So with yet another shot at Supreme, I cut all the corners and made sure they were down as fast as possible. Cross Slash straight to the face is the most effective method, and when the defenses roll up at the end, Cross Slash is still your best bet. You want to beat Supreme in around a minute, so try to end this fight with at least 340 rings. By the time you're ready for Supersonic 2, your ring count will be forced down to somewhere between 280 and 340, so you've eliminated any risk of being short on time at all. Back up from Supreme when they use the plasma shots, and the second you have the opportunity to, Siloop. The Siloop cannot be manually ended, so getting it done as early as possible by starting as early as possible is your best bet to stun Supreme and release the gun as soon as possible. Entering the final phase, my ring count is in a fine position, so I did the bog standard parry into Grand Slam. This gets Supreme to start fighting back the fastest, so let a plasma shot hit. This will activate Spirit Bomb, but this time around we have enough rings to withstand the attack. Spirit Bomb is a one-time use from Supreme, so if you can take the risk and survive, you're in a good position. 
Now, put all of your energy into that fucking cable. Up until you remove it, do not use Grand Slam, unlike what I did. Just go straight for the cable. You can also let Supreme use the Rush Attack, which after defending, they will be stunned long enough for you to remove the cable. Now, use Cross Slash as much as you can, and just before you lose the opportunity to, activate Grand Slam, as it is a lot of damage done in an instant, saving you losing any rings. Even with all this, I almost got sold. I was down to a fraction of the max ring count at the end and things were not looking good. I had one final opportunity to deal damage after parrying the arms, and with just 7 rings left, I let out one final Grand Slam and successfully won the fight. This was possibly the closest call I've had in any Sonic boss fight, and I am still over the moon to know that this entire challenge was even possible. And I think with everything that I just went through, I get to remain the self-declared King of Sonic Frontiers. But I still have many ways to go for that to be official, and you can bet I am going to do it. Much more Frontiers content is on the way, so keep an eye out for that. Huh? This video took an incredibly long time to make, so any and all support is greatly appreciated. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and drop a comment down below if you want, I love reading them. You guys never fail to amuse me, genuinely. Over 85% of the people watching my videos are not subscribed, so if you want to support a little bird like me and make me happy, subscribing to the channel would be much appreciated. Since I started this journey, we are now almost at 1,000 subscribers. If you guys want to help me reach that goal, it would be hella appreciated. And it's free. It's also free to follow me over on my Twitch channel, which I'll leave a link to in the description. We discuss and record my YouTube videos over there, so if you want your input, as well as being witness to saying some weird shit out of context, then you'll love it over there. If you want to go the extra mile to support me with cash, you can also join the YouTube channel as a member or subscribe to the Twitch channel for a small monthly price, each with their own benefits. You would be an absolute chad for this one, but I don't expect it from everyone. And with that, we are at the end. With more Frontiers content from me on the way, I'm excited to try out this update on Extreme Difficulty, as well as the new version of Hedgehog May Cry, and I hope you guys are too. If you have any other ideas for a video, let me know down in the comments. As always, my name is Snack, and I will see you in the next one.